Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for you guys watching the video today. On today's video, we're going to be installing the 280 ZX Fender that we found at the junkyard on my Datsun 280 ZX. Now, if you guys haven't watched the video where me and my buddy Gabe go to the junkyard and find this pretty mint condition Fender uh, that we actually pulled off of another Datsun 280 ZX, go ahead and click the grand right up here. I know I haven't posted a video in quite a while. I'll explain everything in just in a second. But before this video gets started today, be sure to hit that like button and go down below and consider subscribing. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into it. Okay guys, so the reason I haven't been posting a lot on my channel is because I've been dealing with a couple of issues that I ran into for the past couple months now. Um, for starters, both of my vehicles haven't been the very best to me so far. Um, unfortunately, on my Honda, on my daily, um, someone broke my passenger window and I couldn't really see out of my passenger mirror. And it was just super sketchy to drive around because since I couldn't see anything and there was just glass falling everywhere, I couldn't drive for a little bit until I get it replaced. Um, it is leaking a ton of oil. I'm not sure what's causing it. Like I tried replacing the valve cover gasket. Um, so far it's not really doing anything. And I have another um, overheating issue because my cooling fan isn't working. There's a short somewhere. Found out my fuse keeps blowing out. Um, it's gonna take a while just to find, but mainly uh, another reason too is the Datsun has been giving me a ton of problems lately. And well, that's part of the whole package when I'm trying to build and restore this thing. All right, so pretty much um, recently, um, I installed an electric fuel pump and a fuel filter and it increased the performance and the reliability of my Datsun 280ZX. It did help a lot exponentially. Um, the only thing is though, um, when I went to go take it to the professionals because it wasn't starting, it actually needed a new spark plug. So I got this replaced, but they also told me that I have a crack in my manifold. So I knew I had a crack in my manifold for some time now, um, but pretty much it's just getting at a hand out to where the point where a bunch of fumes is coming out of the exhaust manifold. Um, pretty much like when I went to go drive it back home, I had to wear a mask the entire time because it was that bad. Um, I can actually see the fumes coming out of the fender. Let me actually show you guys like how bad the fender is because when I went to go drive, you can actually see or that's how I was able to see the fumes coming out because there is a hole in my fender here and I believe there's a cover underneath there that just shoots out the fumes when I'm pressing the gas. But pretty much um, a couple weeks ago or I would say a, m a month ago at least, I went to go ahead and attempt to try to remove my intake and exhaust manifold. However, it didn't really work so far or work out so far because um, I was managed to get the fuel injectors out and the fuel rail. However, when I got to the intake manifold, it was actually a lot harder than I expected. Didn't have the right tools just to take it, everything out. So I pretty much had to put everything back together and I had to call the day pretty much. But luckily um, I found a mechanic that was willing to help me. So hopefully in the near future we can get that issue fixed. So that way I can finally take this thing out and take some pictures and go on cruises with the boys. But pretty much, uh, Pretty much on today's video, uh, we're going to be focusing on putting in the fender. Alright guys, so I have the fender just chilling right over there, but I got all my tools ready because what I actually need to do, I need to jack up my driver's side because I need to take off my wheel because I need to access my mirror because we are going to actually have to take this off because I'm going to be, I might not be actually putting that onto the new fender today because there's some other things I wanted to talk about that I'll get into eventually. But pretty much what we have to do is jack the front of the vehicle up on the driver's side, remove the wheel, and then expose the few bolts that I have to remove. In the video with the junk guard, I did show there were some bolts for the takeoff, but I'm not really too sure like where they are again. So for starters, we're going to go ahead and jack the vehicle and then we're going to get right into it. All 
All right, guys, for this fender mirror, I have to remove the inner lining or whatever this thing is called on the wheel well. So pretty much all it's holding are just a few Phillips heads. And afterwards, we can go ahead and expose the bolt. Okay guys, that little bracket that's up there is what's holding the fender mirror in. Now, I know it was a pretty stupid place to mount that fender mirror right where this other metal piece is. That's because when I went to go install the fender mirrors for the first time, I actually put them in the wrong place because the way that I have it mounted up is, is directly in the middle of the fender where it's supposed to be onto the more of the edge of the fender on the outside. But eventually when I get another fender mirrors again, I'll do it right this time. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and start unbolting the fender mirrors and then we can start moving on to the fender. Okay, you guys, bracket is out. Now we can go ahead and just pull this straight up. And that's pretty much it. And all I have to do is just remove this other, this other socket, just like so. And that's it. All you have to do now is move on to the fender and just set this one aside. Also guys, another thing too, what's wrong with the dots in it? Just out of nowhere, this passenger fender mirror just started being very flimsy for no reason at all. I don't know if it's because someone accidentally broke it when I took it into the shop or um, a neighbor happened to bump into it by accident, but pretty much, this is pretty much useless. So that's why I'm gonna be changing my fenders in the future. Okay guys, so the next step on removing my fender is we're gonna remove these turning signals. These actually don't work surprisingly. Um, I'm not too sure why. I really want these to work again. I think it's a very nice characteristic about this car. So after we remove that, we're gonna go ahead and open the hood because there's some bolts that we have to um, unscrew as well. Um, from what I remember when I was at the junkyard removing the other dots and fender, um, pretty much I noticed there was some connected actually right here, but there's not even there's not even any connection at all because the rust was just so bad and it's not even connecting no more um i believe there's one down here in the engine bay area but we're just going to do it at a little time so we're going to go ahead and just start with this turning signal probably why it's not working these wires aren't even connected all right so turning signals out okay so as you guys can see now I know why my turning signal is not even working because these wires aren't even connected to anything so it was just sitting there so that's something we're definitely gonna have to fix in the future okay guys so what I noticed when I took out the turning signal there's these plastic pieces here um, I have a feeling we're gonna might we're gonna need these, but I'm not too sure how to take them out. If there's something behind. Oh, okay. It's a clip you have to push out. I'll get them out in a second because I have a feeling I might break them. So for now, I'm just gonna concentrate on removing this entire fender. But pretty much what I wanted to explain to you guys about the fender and how to remove it. Um, pretty much you need to focus on. There's gonna be I believe two bolts connecting to the headlight here. Um, another two bolts or three to the air damp. And I believe down over here, below the fender right before the door, there is going to be another one or two bolts. However, for, um, let me have to turn out the brightness for you guys. As you guys can see right here at the bottom, it's so rusted out, there's not even bolts even holding on and it just smashed in. So, I would, so pretty much uh, there's just one or two bolts here, but I don't think I have to worry about it because it's just completely eaten up. But if you guys come over here, you got the, actually pop your hood oh. all right so as you guys can see turn that down for you guys there is one two three four and five bolts you have to remove. They're all Phillips. Uh, you can, I believe you can use Timberland bolts as well. But I'm gonna try to get, try to use a Phillips head instead. But with that being said, let's go ahead and take this fender off. By 
the way, if you guys have a Daiso near you, or, I mean, you can get this at any auto parts store as well, or tool shop, but I would highly recommend investing in a magnet cup that saves all your bolts and it sticks to the vehicle as well. Just such a key component to when working on cars. And this thing only costs a buck fifty, so if you guys need one, I would definitely go check out Daiso. Oh, before I forget too, actually, if you open your door a little, there is another one. Okay guys, I don't know why it was so hard to get that pulled out. I don't know like what's I don't know why it was just like seized onto there, but I had to use the impact gun and surprisingly it actually worked without snapping it off. Um low-key don't feel like doing that again because I could have snapped it off and made things worse. But good news is I believe there's just one bolt connected left, and I believe it's the one at the bottom. But the thing is, um that's where the pinch roll is, and I have to hammer it back completely straight. In order for me to remove the bolt so i'm gonna go ahead and get a hammer um, move that tire out of the way and just start hammering and hopefully we can get that bolt out and this one should come right off okay guys so i got the last bolt off it actually turned out to be 11 millimeter bolt but um i had to use the impact gun again because it was just so rusted um if you guys had a rust defender like mine, be sure to wear eye protection because there's definitely a lot of rust just flying everywhere on my face. But I'm just wearing glasses right now, but obviously the tool glasses, so much better. But for now, I believe we can actually pull this thing right off and hopefully it'll just come right out. Okay guys, so I tried pulling off the fender, but it seems like there's something connected right here. But when I look underneath the car or underneath the fender, I don't really see anything that connects to it. Okay guys, so here's what's going on. So I found the final bolt. However, I had to remove my headlight and remove the bracket to hold the headlight. I'm gonna actually show you guys a sec. So I had to remove this whole bracket disconnect, just a few Phillips screws so that way I can access a 10 miller bolt that's right here and the fender should pop off afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt that and then we can pull this fender out. Okay guys, so the left driver's side fender is finally off. I end up did off taking off a few other things too. But as you guys can see, I don't have my headlight cover or the headlight in right now. That's because um, I actually need to take some of the components out from the bumper or the, the air damp, the headlight, and I believe the inner lining of the wheel well. Um, I have to transfer over onto the new fender. All right, quick comparison for you guys. Like as you guys can see, this the bottom portion for the junk guard is so much better than what I currently have right now because it just completely damaged from all the rust and the paint and the clear coat is just fading obviously. Um, there is a little damage however to the bottom portion of the new fender. Um, it's just a little bit bent with the slight surface rust. I'm not really too worried about that. Like mostly concerned about this whole fender piece right here as you guys can see this part right over here up to the edge is just completely gone. But the good news is we are replacing that today and we're going to be installing it. But first, I'm actually need to uh, put this onto the new fender as well. And then we have to walk over here. Is get this bracket prepared for the new bolts to be put on. And I believe there's just a few 10 millimeter bolts too that have to go onto the new fender. And then we can go ahead and install it. Okay guys, so for the full old fender, I don't know if this is going to be on your guys' car, but if it is, make sure you push these out from behind. Uh, we're going to need these for the turning signals. Alright guys, I put on all the components I needed to put on onto the new fender from the old one, but I was actually a little bit worried at first that the headlight cover wasn't going to be pretty exact with the body lines, but it actually turned out to be quite nice and it's pretty spot on. Um, the only reason why I was worried because if you guys don't know, on my 1020 ZX, it's a 2x2 version, meaning it has an extra two seats in the back. You guys can't really see it because I don't have it set up right now, but like you can tell it's a 2x2 if you have a window like this because the other one is kind of like a triangular shape, uh, triangular shape but um, anyways, uh, 
so far like it's fitting on pretty nicely i already um just like try to align as best as i can when the fender was still on so i'm pretty confident it will fit but we're gonna go ahead and put it on the car and see how it actually looks all right you guys fender is somewhat put on obviously it's not bolted up but just by the looks of it it looks great i love how it actually lines up with the body line i'm so glad i don't see any more rust no more like all i have to do is just put on the bolts back on and I've obviously put the headlight back on but just looking at the body lines in particular came out phenomenal i'm so happy i got this steel off the junkyard so i'm gonna go ahead and bolt everything back up and afterwards we can go and lower the car and see how she looks after all right guys the new fender is finally on i'm looking at it right now the car i already lowered the car i already put the wheel back on it looks it definitely looks better than it was from the rusted one obviously it's going to be a little bit weird because it's a different color and it's like how my main body color is brown but the body lines is is pretty spot on and i can't wait to do other things to it and get the whole car painted in the way near future but just seeing this installed finally and not seeing that rusted fender no more just puts a smile on my face it, like it looks so good so with that being said here is the new fender on the Datsun 280ZX obviously like it's a little bit of an eyesore because they're two different colors but the main reason why I'm so excited about this because I was a little worried like how the 2x2 version and the regular two-seater Datsun would be but how the body lines matched up perfectly pretty much like to everywhere there's a little bit of fitment issue on the bottom there just because um the the pinch rail is bent in and i had to bend it back and it was a little bit weird to like uh, um, put the screw in between the holes but other than that like the whole fender itself is very very in, just spot on like the only problem is like there's a little bit of some like body line issue right here but i'm not really too crazy about that and a little up here as well like there's a little bit of a gap but honestly i think i think it's a huge win like the match is so good and another thing too like when we pulled the fender we also got the 280zx badge which is really cool because um on my old fender there wasn't a 280zx badge but just to have that obviously we'll be replacing with a brand new one in the future but just seeing that alone and a new fender on the Dodson 280ZX. Like we got, we take care of the most rusted spot on the Dodson and I couldn't be more happier. Obviously we got way more other rusted spots. I'll probably be doing a bonding video pretty soon. Like on the window cowl here and a little bit on the rooftop as well. And definitely the corner panel windows definitely need a do some bondo work in the future but that pretty much said like the only left thing to do just to have this fender completed is install another fender mirrors that one's obviously broken this one i have but like i don't think i'm going to be putting on the same fender mirror onto the new fender um i will be ordering some new fender mirrors i still haven't found out which one i want yet because i i would definitely be nice to get my hands on an actual jdm fender mirrors from the 240 or 280zs uh, but they're like very expensive and they're like very hard to find in great condition and brand new as well but i'm gonna let time do its thing hopefully we get to find a pair for the Datsun. but it really depends like what i want to be put on this car but with that being said i'm going to go ahead and end the video here today like this is a short video today but i promise i have more content coming in the near future i have a bunch of parts just laying in my room but I have to solve that crack in my manifold first before I get to do any of that stuff. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Be sure to hit that like button. Consider subscribing as well. Be sure to check out my Instagram page. I update there pretty frequently. And that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.